Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're about to get into some chocolate fragrances. This is part of a series of videos that I'm doing that feature fall gourmand kind of scents or scents that have a gourmand lean. So I did a coffee video earlier. This one's gonna focus on chocolate. I have a whole long list of chocolate fragrances to share with you. And I think I'm gonna reserve my caramel fragrances to feature along with apple and perhaps cinnamon. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna divide those up, but those are coming up along with a patchouli video, along with a tobacco and woody kind of fragrances video, and all of the other usual series that I do. So stay tuned. Let me know, are you a chocolate fanatic? Let's drop that down in the comments. If so, are you a white chocolate, milk chocolate, or dark chocolate fan, or all three? I personally love milk chocolate, but I adore dark chocolate, and I love it if it has something crunchy in it, like some almonds or some macadamia nuts crushed in it or something like that, I just love. So one of the main criteria for me in thinking about which fragrances to include in the video versus exclude is can you actually pick up the chocolate note in the fragrance or the chocolate accord? Is it obvious enough to be part of this video? Oftentimes I will watch videos that feature a specific note and a fragrance is mentioned and I think to myself, yeah, but it's way deep in the background or it's kind of hardly detectable. So I wanted to pick some out where you really know that it is chocolate based or has a heavy chocolate fragrance in it. So that's a main criteria. Before we get into the actual fragrances that I have, I did want to feature an oil that I think is a good one to roll on before you put on chocolate fragrances. There's some kind of notes that just have maybe poor longevity in fragrances or just seem to not stick around as much as other notes like patchouli tends to be a long lasting note. Chocolate is one of those notes that can be sort of fleeting. So I would recommend some kind of an oil. Some people like Choco Musk by Al Rehab. I had that. It was a little soft for me and more on the vanilla side, but that could be one that you layer underneath your chocolate fragrances. I personally love dark chocolate and this is from Demeter. This is a delicious dark chocolate fragrance that comes in oil form. I think it also comes in a cologne concentration that you can spray on as well as a parfum concentration. I have the oil that I use to layer underneath chocolate fragrances. So I'm going to divide this video into three segments. In the first one, we'll have a handful of fragrances where you can notice a chocolate note or a cacao accord. However, the fragrance has other noticeable dominant notes in it as well. So chocolate may not be like the star player. And then we'll go to the middle category where there may be a little bit more pronounced. And I'll end with the ones where the chocolate note is the strongest. So my first one up is the beautiful Tabak Rose from BDK. So this is one that I would not advise blind buying, please do sample it first because it is a peculiar fragrance for those that don't have a nose accustomed to these kinds of odd combination of accords. So there's rose, there's tobacco, there's spices in here, and there is a chocolate accord that I believe is noticeable, especially if you know to smell for it. The chocolate is not the main player in this. It does serve a background base for, I think, the rose and the tobacco and a little bit of spiciness to shine through. You'll see this so. fragrance again, probably in a rose video and probably in a tobacco video because I feel like those are just as big players in this composition as the chocolate and maybe more so. But I did want to mention in this one. Next I go to a very polarizing fragrance that people either love or hate and some love to hate and some hate to love and <laughs> it is Tom Ford's Black Orchid. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration. You almost have to know the chocolate is in here, but once you know that it is, it's hard not to pick it out. This is also patchouli, and it's a very sort of earthy, dirty fragrance. Like it's gritty. It's got some spiciness in it. It's very dark and mysterious. Some find it completely repulsive. I did at first too until I fell in love with it, and it's now one of my favorite fragrances that I will not be without. But I think there is a defined, like a darker, richer chocolate note in here that plays really well with the earthy notes, the woody notes, and the patchouli in here. Let me pause to say something I probably should have said at the top of the video, and it's the difference between cacao, cocoa, and chocolate. So cacao is actually the raw seed that chocolate comes from. I've been to a cacao farm. I've had cacao grounded right in front of me to make cocoa powder. 
and cocoa powder is then used to make chocolate, either dark or milk chocolate. But the cacao, the raw cacao, like if you've ever had the actual seed, it's actually quite bitter and a little bit woody. You can definitely smell the chocolate in it, but it's this raw, earthy chocolate kind of scent. The cocoa powder that comes from that is a little bit more dry and dusty. And then when I think about chocolate, different from cacao and the cocoa. Cocoa is used to make chocolate. Think about chocolate being sugary and very sweet and edible and gourmand, okay? And then I think you all know the difference between milk chocolate, white chocolate, and dark chocolate, so we don't need to get into that. So you'll hear me talk interchangeably about the three. They're not, they're different. And so just know that as we talk about whether it's a chocolate or a cacao accord, and I bring that up because I want it to feature Tiziana Terenzi Marema, which is similar to Black Orchid. They have a, they vibe the same. This one I think is even earthier, deeper on the ambery side of things, and it's got a cacao accord in here. So it's that more earthy, like I said, bitter cacao uh, seed with the amber. There's some resinous pieces in here. If you're too scared to buy Tom Ford's Black Orchid, which I think is even more bizarre, try Marema. They're or Marema. They're very similar. This one may be a little bit more tolerable than Black Orchid. Before we get to fragrances where the chocolate note is more noticeable in the sense that people really understand chocolate to be like the candy kind of a chocolate, I do want to bring up another one of these sort of darker, more mysterious scents for consideration. It's from Fresh, and this is called Cannabis Centaur. This is my second bottle. I went through a full bottle of this pretty quickly. Easy to overspray. It doesn't last the longest. You'll get like a half a day's wear out of it, but it's good enough. And it's a patchouli fragrance with chocolate in it, and I believe there's a rose note or some other kind of floral. This fragrance is what I call my superhero fragrance. I imagine wearing this as I am a superhero, like a spider woman, maybe <laughs> in some kind of black leather suit, fighting bad guys. It's this beautiful, mysterious scent. To enjoy this fragrance, you definitely have to appreciate a pronounced patchouli. There's a bit of a cannabis note in here that I think is very muted and barely noticeable, if at all. There's also a rose note and there's a dark, dark chocolate base note in here. So that's why I want this in this video because I do think that the chocolate shines through, especially in the winter and especially if you spray it onto your skin. Cannabis Santal. Then moving into what we typically think of when you hear the word chocolate, which is the more sugary candy kind of version of it. An honorable mention goes to Van Cleef and Arpel's Orchidy Vini, which has a very faint chocolate thing happening in there. The reason that it's an honorable mention is I have not brought myself to purchase a full bottle because it is so, so soft and very fleeting as are most of the Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances that I have tried. I spray them on, I enjoy them for like 20 minutes and then they're gone, poof, like they're out of here. Uh, yeah, so that's the deal with me. Some people talk about this lasting a lot longer on them. There's vanilla, there's other gourmand notes, but the chocolate in here is very faint, very noticeable in the sense that we know chocolate to be in candy. So, but if you like a very close to the skin kind of a fragrance that's not going to bother anyone and you want something to wear around the house or into the office or to bed, consider Orchid Ebony. I will not be purchasing a full bottle for the reasons that I mentioned, but that's not to take away from the loveliness of this fragrance. Next is a fun, light fragrance that isn't to be taken seriously, but it's an affordable fragrance that is fun to wear if you like chocolate and pear, because that's exactly what you get in here, although muted. You're not going to get a super dark chocolate or super heavy pear. It's from Enrico G. I think it's how you pronounce the last name, or at least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. It's G-I, the last name, and it's Pears and Chocolate Delight. I got this on FragranceNet for 30 something dollars, maybe less, and I don't know if that's what it reads Tales for. I don't know very much about this perfume line in general, but I purchased three on sale and this is one and it smells exactly like it sounds. You get this really light muted pear and a really sort of pale chocolate combining. Another one that's really great to wear around the house, under sweaters, running errands. Not a serious fragrance, but playful, fun, and certainly like a hidden gem, affordable kind of a fragrance. Another light chocolate fragrance worth mentioning if you like the softer ones. This was gifted to me by the beautiful Sunny Scents here on YouTube. Go check her out. She's lovely. She's beautiful. She's sweet. She's fun. 
and she really likes soft gourmand fragrances. This is Silk Lace and Chocolate Eau de Parfum from 4160 Tuesdays, London. Now, I know that this line also has Over the Chocolate Shop, which I sampled and I think opens really nicely as a dark chocolate fragrance, but that part of things, for me anyway, went away really quickly, and that fragrance settled down into something that, at least on the sample that I have, just didn't impress me enough to want to mention in this video. So I apologize to the lovers of that out there, and I appreciate having tried the sample but I think the chocolate in this is really lovely and it's fun because it's also accompanied by a strawberry note so the last one is pear this one is strawberry and chocolate and it's sweet and it's soft and it's fun and I love the name silk lace and chocolate so another one that's really great for cozy days for rainy days when you want just that comfort underneath of a sweater or something like that fun little fragrance fun bottle thanks Sunny should have mentioned this next one with the opening more bizarre ones <laughs> because it is bizarre to me. I do like it. I really, really, really have to be in the mood to wear this one. And it's Angel Muse. This is the Eau de Toilette. I do have the Eau de Parfum, but the chocolate is more pronounced in this version, the Eau de Toilette. This is what I like to call a chewy fragrance. Thanks to Paula Bianca here on YouTube. She did a chewy fragrance video that made me then think about fragrances as being chewy or not. And chewy in the sense that there's a lot here to dig your olfactory teeth into. <laughs> there's a thickness to this fragrance, a viscosity to it, if you will, that almost feels like it can be chewy if you were to smell it in the, if the smell turned into like a liquid form, okay, it would be chunky in some senses. I know that's weird. There is a tropical sort of thing happening in here if you wear it during the summertime and imagine that. For the most part, this is a deeply like sweet in a bizarre way fragrance that has hazelnut and it has chocolate. This is for the most part a woody fragrance with a really deep, almost sickening sweetness. I don't mean sweet in like the candy sense. I mean sweet in, I don't know how to describe it. It's just really a difficult fragrance to, to pin down, almost, almost cloyingly sweet, like in a very mature way. There's hazelnut, there's chocolate in here, there's even caramel. So a lot of gourmand notes, and yet it's very woody. So it has that same kind of peculiarity, peculiarness, peculiarity as Black Orchid. It kind of reminds me of the oddness of that, the oddness of Cannabis Santal, the semi-oddness of Morema, all of that. All of these are kind of in the same category. So I should have put it there, but here you go. Angel Muse EDT. Back to the territory of recognizable chocolate scents or cacao kinds of scents. I have a new beauty in my collection that I tested as part of a is it blind buy worthy or full bottle worthy video series. And I haven't talked about this in that series yet, but you'll hear about it again. <laughs> I just had to mention it because I loved it so much I got a bottle. And it's from, I think it's Maison Tahite because the accent's over the E, Maison Tahite, and it's Carnal Cacao. First of all, can we just take a second to appreciate the beauty of this amber bottle? In a sea of either really bizarre bottles or terribly predictable bottles, there's something really elegant, classy, and unique about this amber bottle, the shape of it with the gold. Okay, that aside, the fragrance is wonderful. Moderate longevity, I do wish it had longer st staying power, get about a half a day's worth but I don't care because I like it. I will say that it has a prominent tuberose note that accompanies this really lovely deep chocolatey cacao kind of a accord in here. I find it rich. I find it beautiful. Definitely try this one first but I love the way the tuberose and the cacao play together in here and I think I'm going to make this my scent of the day because it is just so absolutely wonderful. It's like the elegant chocolate fragrance. Ooh, y'all, I smell good. <laughs> good, good. From the same house, another absolutely fabulous fragrance that I should probably just put on a Christmas wish list, but it is Cacao 2. So it smells a lot like carnal cacao, except it's very heavy in the cacao direction, the chocolate direction. A really rich burst of that deep, dark, luscious chocolate smell. It's got cinnamon in it and vanilla, So, but it leans heavily in the chocolate direction. Okay, so yes, there's some vanilla, some sweetness, some spiciness, but definitely through and through a cacao fragrance. And I want it. <laughs> I want it. That 
part of the fragrance that is the richest darkest chocolate you know you get a few hours out of that and then the rest of the fragrance life is still quite beautiful a little bit more on the dull side than when it opens but boy is this a beautiful photorealistic cacao fragrance love 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 this one is somewhere between an honorable mention and a straight up mention in this chocolate category, but it's Black Phantom from Killian. I have two dupes. I have not purchased the actual bottle uh, because I don't want to pay for it, to be honest with you. So I have Dark Knight from Alexandria and then I have Black Phantom from Fragrant Body Oils. That's a tongue twister. Anyway, these two together, layered together, are fantastic. The reason that it's kind of honorable mention, but maybe really belongs in this category, is because you get coffee as well. Coffee and cacao play Lovely, together. woody, spicy, boozy, coffee, chocolate kind of combination uh, that's wonderful for cool days, cold evenings, winter. Black Phantom. Speaking of pricey fragrances on my wish list, at some point, I will have this in my collection, but goodness gracious, <laughs> this is going to cost me a little bit more than I want to pay. It's Cacao Porcelana from Atelier Materi. First of all, these bottles are just so, so good looking. They're good looking, nice architectural design to them, great color choices, really unique in the market. But the scent here is a very true, rich, like buttery chocolate smell accompanied by a little bit of white floral like just a hint there's some spiciness and booziness in here there's a heavy heavy sweetness from a tonka bean and a touch of sandalwood i have a few other fragrances in my collection that kind of remind me of this but they don't have like the cacao aspect so one that comes to mind is sea intense the recent version not the old version in the black bottle but the 2021 i think it was version yeah, that same deep sweetness. Like if you think about that one leading leaning in the black current direction, this sort of takes that into the cacao direction or chocolate, deep, rich, dark chocolate, just uh, boozy, <laughs> uh, buttery deliciousness. So I'd love to have this in my collection and, you know, worth having on the wish list for sure. Yeah, this is a really, really fantastic fragrance you may not have heard of but is one of the truest dark chocolate fragrances I have ever sniffed is from Alchemia and it's called Chocolate Noir. I have this five milliliter and I'm kicking myself that I didn't order something bigger but I wanted to try it out. This smells at least out of here and I have tried it on skin and I'll talk about that in a second. If you bake and you use pure cacao powder and mix it with butter and chocolate. When it's heated up as that side liquid ingredient that you're going to fold into other things or make brownies out of or something like that. In fact, it smells like a very, very rich dark chocolate brownie batter. Very, very true to that. I got probably a little bit less than moderate longevity on this and it became a skin scent pretty quickly so that's something to keep in mind but boy is this one of the truest chocolate fragrances i have ever sniffed delightful makes my mouth water when i sniff it definitely worth checking out chocolate noir I would also recommend from Solstice Scents Coco Absolute. This fragrance smells just like dry chocolate uh, powder and it has a nutty accord. So imagine like peanuts, crushed peanuts with chocolate. Does that make it like a Reese's peanut butter cup? Maybe kind of, sort of, without like the heavy sugariness. Like if you imagine those two scents, but on the drier, dustier end, you get this Coco Absolute really nice, scent from solstice scents so i can't speak a lot to the longevity of this since i have worn it to sleep a couple of times now and it lasts you know the hour or two that i have it on before i go to sleep i don't wake up with it on so it's not the longest lasting fragrance but what a fun little number uh and affordable from an indie house Another fragrance that I mentioned in my coffee video because it has a strong coffee note, but it belongs here also because it has an even stronger chocolate fragrance, or maybe they play well together side by side, is Hugo Boss, The Scent Private Accord. We all know if we've been watching fragrance videos that this has poor longevity, so I don't need to get into that, but definitely a great around the house scent, very gourmand, very edible, uh, both coffee, chocolate, sweet kind of a fragrance. And I did happen to get my hands on on the scent absolute which is an even more intense version of this heavier on the vanilla and a really sort of sweet coffee chocolate is less pronounced in here if it's in here but definitely this one has a chocolate accord that belongs in here cacao
A really sweet like date night chocolate fragrance is Prada Candy Night. Thank you Yulia at SenseSiblingCA.com for gifting me this bottle. I'll link her below also. Check her out. I've chatted about her on my channel before. This fragrance is delightful but on the softer side. It has moderate longevity and projection but really fantastic for a date night. The trick with this fragrance is you have to wait until the dry down where the chocolate and the tonka and the vanilla play together to make this a really soft, sweet gourmand that's on the girly end. And I love this bottle, these Prada bottles. <laughs> I know sometimes they get hate, the candy line, the Prada candy, the uh, candy night. All of these get some hate. And I don't understand that because I think they're really nice bottles. And the scents are, listen, they're mass appealing. There's a reason that men like them. There's a reason that a lot of ladies purchase these. Then, for those of you that have been trying to get your hands on your gourmand coquan, Listen up, I got you boo, I got you covered. So you know that that fragrance is really difficult to get a hold of and when you can, it's rather expensive. And people on the secondhand market are asking, you know, ridiculous prices for that. But I got you covered. Check out these two options. This is from Dua. <laughs> Dark chocolate, rum, and vanilla, which is, I think, even better than the original Gourmand Coquan. By the way, I was, 47 years old and six months when I learned that it's coquan and not coquine. <laughs> I saw that in someone's comments. I was watching someone else's video and saw it in the comments and thought, <gasps> like I literally like clutched my pearls, like, oh my gosh, I've been saying it wrong this whole time, coquan. Okay. Anyway, a uh, wonderful, affordable option. Really deep, lovely, grown up, boozy chocolate fragrance with some spices. I adore this. And then I also got a sample of the Juliana's Parfume perfumes call me by your name from jackie here at jack's beautiful you i will link her below if you haven't checked out jackie's channel go check her out she's a makeup artist does beautiful makeup looks she does fragrance she does other beauty stuff and she's just got this magnetic personality and is beautiful beautiful you need to go watch her so i'll link her below but anyway she sent me her sample from juliana's perfume i keep wanting to say perfume perfumes uh, and I went and purchased a bottle. So that's on the way from Call Me By Your Name, a striking resemblance to Gourmand Coquan. And I understand from the reviews that it's much longer lasting. Certainly the sample lasted a lot longer. I really liked the sample that I ha had of Gourmand Coquan. My problem was that it was pretty soft on the skin and it wasn't very long lasting. It was fleeting. I think it lasted an hour or so, maybe two on my skin when I tried it. And I tried it several times just to make sure that I wasn't crazy. So maybe something was wrong with my sample let me know if you have better longevity with the original gourmand coquan anyway if you don't want to pay the big bucks y'all these are two wonderful wonderful dupes for gourmand coquan check them out another affordable chocolate fragrance to check out this is an original creation from alexandria fragrances and it's called cacao dreams Privé. Almond, vanilla, sweet, it says as the main notes accords here on this. I also get some woodiness out of this, so it's sweet, it's chocolate, it's nutty with that almond thing, and it's a real sweet kind of an almond. More on the masculine side, but definitely a beauty and affordable. This little thing was 30 ish dollars, and you can check out sales on Alexandria Fragrances website where they do 20% off deals. So you can get this for a bit of a steal. Really, really nice. I'm gonna round out this video with three of my favorites, one of them more recent than others. And the recent one is Wicked Good from Gallagher. This is the new newer bottle design. Again, not a fragrance that is super affordable. This is, I think, a 1.7 ounce and it's over $100. So I find that to be moving into the pricier range. Not the most expensive, but certainly not in the affordable range. But man, what a wicked good chocolate fragrance this is, <laughs> especially on the opening and in like the first hour. It is one of the truest, most uh, milky, chocolate, sweet fragrances. Like you got a fresh chocolate bar that has tons and tons of sugar and butter in it sprayed onto your skin. It does calm down into something a little bit drier. After that, the notes listed are chocolate, vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, and tonka bean here. So really nice composition. This is like the milk chocolate version of the chocolate noir from Alchemia, 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 Alchemia. So if this is like the deep dark chocolate with the butter and the sugar, this is more like the milk chocolate. Really delicious, true, true, true chocolate fragrance. 
I think this next fragrance is hard to get a hold of if I'm not mistaken. I purchased mine on Amazon in case you're curious and want to get your hands on it. I think it's discontinued, not 100% sure. It's not available on the Sephora site anymore and it's Cocoa Woods from Nest. So I did have a travel spray of this that I liked but maybe at that point not enough to get a full bottle. And then I got interested in it again and decided to take the plunge and I'm glad that I did. This is a deep dark chocolate with some woods. It has a little bit of ginger. It has some tropical florals. It also gives me that sea intense kind of a thing like this deep dark sweetness like a berry like sweetness in it uh, but not on the fruity side just the sweetness of like the dark berry if that makes sense and it is really mature a darker cacao kind of chocolate on the skin not a milky chocolate and it's woody so it's a bit powerful that way and I get good longevity out of this not all day long but a decent amount um, and it stays pretty strong it's a little bit on the drier side in terms of the chocolate scents like some of the other ones I mentioned are more buttery this one is maybe on the drier woodier end but definitely worth mentioning in this video and quite beautiful and I mean do we not love the Nest bottles? I mean, I know some people don't like them. I don't get it. I think they're super pretty. And then I'm going to end this video with what may be my favorite chocolate fragrance of the entire bunch that I mentioned today in this video. And it is again from Dua. You know, I'll have my love-hate relationship with Dua, but they do gourmands, right? This is dark chocolate, rum, and vanilla. Wow. That's what I have to say about this. This is a combination of their Belgian Choco Truffle uh, from Dua and their impression of Tonka Imperial from Guerlain. And it is boozy, it is dark chocolate, it is vanilla. I mean, a heavy, heavy booze and a heavy, thick, dark chocolate and a beautiful, lovely, sweet vanilla in here that just wows me when I put it on. It's a special fragrance and it just does something to me. I love this fragrance and for the price, I mean, this bottle is, I think, in the 60 range. And if you wait for sales and get a 30% off, although I think it's sold out on the Dua site right now, but it comes back in stock and you can certainly look on Mercari and get it like in the $40 range. Wonderful, long lasting, delicious, delicious chocolate. Those are my chocolate fragrances for today, friends. I'd love to hear in the comments, what is your favorite chocolate fragrance that you would advise others to go check out right away because it's so spectacular. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an ooey gooey fall full of fabulous gourmand fragrances with delicious notes like chocolate, like coffee, like pumpkin spice, like apple, like caramel, and all of the wonderful flavors of fall. See you in the next video. Take care, my friends.